Welcome to Inside Medicine, another edition here at the studio. We are in the studio today with the founders and the partners of Resort Sierra's MD. Uh, I'd like to introduce and get everybody uh, introduced to Tyra Bell Holland, the CEO and founder, and Dr. Constantine George, the medical director. So, for those of you that are new to the show today, we broadcast here live in the studio every single Friday at 10 o'clock. And you could catch this on Roku, iTunes, or the best way, if you go to VegasVideoNetwork.com slash live, you are actually able to chat with the guests. So if you have questions and you're live with us today, please go ahead and ask those in the chat box, and uh, we'll hope to answer all of those. So again, welcome to the studio, Tyra and Dr. George, and uh, tell us a little bit about Resort Sierra's MD. Tyra, this is your brain, this is your, your, your brainchild. Tell us about it. Good morning. So, um, yes. I'm very excited to be here. Resort Concierge or Resort Sierge MD is a house call medical group, mm-hmm. and we launched in January, and um, it's been really great thus far. Yeah, so tell it's a unique idea. We're doing hotel house calls, and obviously, no city in the world has more hotel rooms than Las Vegas. 155,000 hotel rooms. How did you come up with this idea? Well, I was a concierge for many years, and um, I actually had children. I have children, and we were traveling to Miami, and they got sick. And it was very scary for me. Um, I was in a different city. I didn't know a lot of people. And what do you do when you have a child and needs medical attention? Sure, sure. So from that, you said maybe this would work in Las Vegas? I thought, wow, we're in a city with five-star restaurants and and shows and attractions, and how does this service not exist in Las Vegas? How is that not possible? So I literally introduced the concept when um, I was a concierge at Bellagio when I -hmm. I opened that resort in 1898, and um, I continued to take that service with me from any other mega resort that I um, was with. Okay, very cool. So, Dr. George, you're the medical director. How did you get introduced to this concept and what makes it exciting? Good morning. Thanks for having us on today. Um, Introductions. uh, Tyra and I were introduced through a mutual friend Mm -hmm. and one thing led to another and this is kind of where we're at today. And I think there's a big need for this service here in Las Vegas. We, like you said, have more hotel rooms than any other city in the world. And we're trying to grow Las Vegas as a medical tourism hub and make it an international and national destination, obviously. And so by having a unique product like this that we can offer to our guests, whether they're locals, they're national travelers, international travelers, I think it's a good thing to have. And it kind of showcases that we're just not Las Vegas. We're just not hotels. We're just not the strip. We're not all about gambling. We have other arenas and avenues that we can pursue and we can showcase to people that come into town all the time. So I think it's a good idea. So, Tyra, you spent most of your career in the concierge business. How does a property benefit from a service like this? Like, what does that, what what value do they see in that? You know, when you're working in a luxury resort with anywhere from 3,000 to perhaps 8,000 rooms, it's like operating a little city. And um, to when you're operating a city, people get sick. Sure. And to not recognize that or not embrace that, I think is a huge liability. And I think that... We have progressed so much that um, true hospitality, and when you speak hospitality, you want to be prepared for anything, any situation that could be presented to you. So um, by providing this and knowing exactly how your guests are feeling, if there's a situation, um, reduces liability. We know who's servicing the guests. Um, We know um, who... in the room needs medical attention immediately. We work really closely with the properties, management, risk management, security, things like that, um, to make sure that we all have the same goals and getting the guests back on their feet, back into the restaurants, back into the casinos. Spending money. Spending money, <laughs> not missing their shows. I mean, you know, most guests here, they may only have been here. It could be their first trip. Mm-hmm. Um, they may have saved. Um, to be here. It could be a special occasion. So their time is very limited and very valuable. And uh, we want to make sure they know they have a resource immediately. Oftentimes we can get a doctor on the phone faster than you can get into a gourmet restaurant with a reservation. So we're we're very proud of that. So that's super cool. Uh, So let me ask you something else. So do you work, is it specifically with the concierge services, the hotel front desk? You mentioned even security risk management. Tell us Sure. Is it, it's a team play. Great question. Um, because most of the concierge in Las Vegas, or I should say, none of the concierge are a 24-hour operation. Mm-hmm. We do flow into um, 
resort services or operators or bellmen or doormen um, because get, guests get sick 24-7 and we are a 24-7 operation. So it really is a team effort and educating um, the property and the resort on who we are and what we are and what we're capable of doing. Yep. So, Dr. George, you're the one, you show up on these house calls. You pick up the phone, you talk to these guests. Talk to us about the typical experience, the typical case. I'm sure don't violate any HIPAA stuff, (laughs) uh, but tell us a little bit about that and, you know, how you treat that guest. So, the (laughs) protocol that we have in place since we started back in January, typically... Uh, let's say there's a guest, we'll just pick a random hotel in Mandarin Oriental as an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a client that's upstairs that's ill, not feeling well. They'll make a phone call down to concierge guest services if it's during the appropriate time. And concierge guest services will kind of get information from the patient, mm-hmm. add, refer the patient out to either our company or whomever else they desire to do so with. And then once we get that phone call, comes into the company, Tyra gets that initial phone call. Then Tyra contacts me immediately with a short period of time. There's really no there's a quick turnaround time contacts me kind of gives me basic information as to what's going on with the client then what i do in return and as i contact the hotel immediately back and this all happens within literally a minute or two of time so there's quick turnaround time for the patient and the guest and we contact the concierge kind of get an idea of who the concierge is because they have a unique relationship with the guest already um, Mm -hmm. previously so want to continue that relationship that's been established already and then we get transferred to the client's hotel room and I'll talk to the patient as if I'm talking to any regular patient in the even in the exam room and just ask them the basics, what's going on, what symptoms mm-hmm. do you have, how long have you had the symptoms for, is it something new for you, anybody around you has similar problems or similar issues, and just to get an idea, is it something that can be dealt with on an outpatient basis mm-hmm. um, or are you dealing with something that's more severe because the obvious reason is you don't want to get somebody on the phone ask questions and miss an opportunity where you might need emergency medical services sure. that aren't necessarily provided in the best fashion in a hotel room. So once we see the client and I talk to them that way on the phone, I kind of give them an estimated time of arrival. And usually we've been pretty good about anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. We'll be there to see the guests so they're not having to wait a long period of time. To them, it's a convenience because otherwise they end up having to go to the emergency room. They don't know where to go. There's, let's say sunrise is an example because they're so close to the strip. They go to the ER, they're waiting there anywhere from two to three hours at times, and it's just a very, it's a big inconvenience for the guest, whereas we're there within 30 to 60 minutes, they put a face to the name back and forth, and we actually have that personal touch with a patient. Speaking of concierge services in Las Vegas, it's all about hospitality, so we infuse that into what we're doing on a daily basis, basically. Talk to the patient, do your exam, do your assessment. And what I do in the uh, hotel room after I'm done examining the patient, um, and we have great follow-up, we treat them, we write prescriptions out, we have services available where we can actually have a courier go to the pharmacy and pick up the prescriptions for the client so the client's not having to get into a car, nice. find where the pharmacy's at, we deliver them right to the hotel, Tyra is very good at doing that, and we give them to the concierge and maintain that hospitality component and we basically handhold the client from the first initial phone call until we're done. And then once the patient gets the medications, I usually do a follow-up call that same day just to make sure they receive the medications, they're feeling better, they're not having any side effects, any issues at all. And we also do a courtesy phone call the next morning as well if they're still in town, if they're not leaving that evening, let's say, just to make sure, are you feeling any better today? Have you been taking your medications or is there something that's kind of turned for the worse, basically? So that's kind of a typical experience that we have. We email patients all the time. I've had new numerous patients where I'll send them letters after the fact. Obviously, they submit those things to their insurance company, but they'll be in touch. We had a client about two, three weeks ago that sent a very nice email congratulating us, saying thank you very much for your services. It was gives it a great job. It was appreciated that we could see you so quickly and we got taken care of in such a short period of time in the environment of the hotel so we're not having to travel outside, go somewhere else, obviously. So, so the hotels must love this because it keeps the patient, the guest, happy. And it's an extension of that guest experience that we pride ourselves on in Las Vegas. We attract 42 million visitors a year. So kudos to the two of you. So how, you. give us the hotel feedback. So what do, how do they how do they feel about this? Um, it's been really positive, very supportive. Um, I'm very fortunate because I've been a concierge for many years. Um, I know everyone that's calling and putting me in touch with the guests. So it's that personal connection. Yeah. They're, they're like, hello, Tyra, I have a guest and I know who they are. Um, so that makes it even more meaningful. Um, I do want to mention that, you know, we certainly don't take the place of the R room. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that the hospitals are so supportive of us because there's a large percentage of guests that don't necessarily need an ER room. Sure. So it alleviates a lot of um, the true emergencies and that wait time and gets those guests treated immediately. So we do work really closely with the hospitals um, and we do refer a lot of patients when necessary. Yeah, you bet. Well, hopefully hospital. we don't have those emergent situations. <laughs> right, right. So um, it's been really great from the entire medical community mm-hmm. um, and they've really embraced us. Um, but the concierge have been fabulous. Um, like I said, I've known them for over 15 years. Either many have worked for me or I was their past mm-hmm. president of the SNHCA or actually um, taught the first concierge curriculum in the state of Nevada at the International School mm-hmm. of Hospitality. So um, I, I do have quite an established relationship. Which so this is, is a great. perfect marriage between the two of you. You're awesome at concierge. You're awesome at medicine. And the two of you build, a, a, you're, you've got an amazing team here. Thank Dr. You. George, tell us about your background. Tell us about where you went to med school. Tell us about... Uh, you, where you've trained. So I, native boy, grew up, were born go. and raised in Las Vegas, family immigrated here from Greece, and there's five of us all together. So I did everything here locally, went to Bonanza High School, went to UNLV for undergraduate, uh, medical school, stayed in the state. At that time, there was only the University of Nevada School of Medicine in Reno. As we all know, we're attempting to get a school, and we will be getting a school here locally, the medical school for UNLV, which is an awesome thing. Um, did training there for four years, and then for my residency, since I'm both a board-certified internal medicine physician and also board-certified pediatrician, there wasn't a combined program offered here locally that I could have stayed and done. So the next best option was going out to Phoenix, Arizona, mm-hmm. trained at Maricopa Medical Center. And at that time, they had an established relationship with Good Samaritan Hospital, Mayo Clinic, and Phoenix Children's Hospital as well. So it was a four-year training program mm-hmm. that was from 2001 until 2005. And then at that time, I came back to Las Vegas and I had a good connection at that time with Southern Hills Hospital, which we've maintained that connection all these years. And... Um, practice set up my private practice back then and it's been full force ever since so so you had every intention of coming back to las vegas we Always. love hearing that so Always. i would never leave there you go so what makes las vegas unique compared to you practiced in phoenix what makes vegas unique it's a different kind of feeling in this city it's a 24 hour seven city obviously you're always on the go. We get spoiled, I think, without realizing it. If we're here without traveling to other places outside, um, everything's accessible at our fingertips. You get in the car, you can drive a few minutes down the street and have access to whatever you need. Whereas going to Phoenix and doing studies there for four years, it kind of makes you realize what you you don't have there. Things aren't 24 seven. You don't have the amenities that you have here that are in your backyard 24 seven all the time. So I think growing up here and having been able to go outside of the city and do training and living for a period of time, makes you appreciate what we really have here. Whereas if you're from here and not really having gone elsewhere, you kind of get stuck in the mundane daily, whatever you do. And you forget that there's those amenities that we have all the time. And it's the people that we have here in Las Vegas. Obviously we're a different breed. We're very quick. We're on the go, but we're very hospitable. We're very polite. It's just the nature that we're in this city. This is what we do. So I think that's the biggest reason why I came back. Family, obviously, but also it's just the people in the town yep. that I grew up in. So, Tyra, are you from Vegas? Originally from Austin, Texas. Wow. Um, but I've been here almost 25 years. Um, I'm a UNLV running rebel. There you class go. of 94. Wow. Um, and so I'm very proud to be here and have stayed here and created a family here. So what brought you into the concierge business? Um, kind of a funny story. Um, I was a business major at UNLV, and um, I actually had to take classes, um, core classes, and decided to choose a, a degree that had the least amount of math. So, <laughs> so um, I have a BS in hotel administration, and it, it was truly a blessing, um, you know, having opened Bellagio as a concierge, kind of goes straight to the, to the top. Absolutely. And um, it's just been training and honing of my skills and amazing mentors in my life and hospitality. And I'm just very proud and privileged to be here. And other countries have hired you to come train and build their staff. Tell us about that recent experience and how that applies to what you're doing here. Yeah. So, um, that was interesting because I actually haven't been a concierge professionally for, um, for almost five years. Um, I had the opportunity, I was recruited by an old senior, not an old, a (laughs) prior, a senior vice president, um, at Venetian Palazzo to open the only $4 billion resort in, 
um, Bahamas or Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, and it was Bahamar. And so I wasn't sure. I, you know, I was initially was a little uh, intimidated because I hadn't been a concierge, but it, it really truly is when you speak hospitality, you live hospitality, it's like riding a bike. And um, I felt like it really breathed life back into me. I didn't realize how much I had missed it. And so um, I was there in training and, and uh, for a brand new multi-billion dollar resort and uh, it was fabulous and I met the most amazing people in my life and and when I got back I hit the ground running with resort CRGMD and this is all I've ever wanted to do is to marry medicine yeah. and concierge. You know it's interesting Las Vegas Hills has been on this journey for we we call it medical tourism but I really want to get away from that name it's because it's not tourism it's travel people coming here for great quality care and you know we started this journey back in 2011 uh, we partnered up with the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, um, and we wrote a strategic plan. And I think a lot of the work that you're doing today fits into that plan. It's how do we touch the 42 million that come through Las Vegas, show our hospitality that we deliver to 42 million people each and every year, and then bring that into healthcare. So share a little bit about how this fits with that model and and how and what you're doing to expand it even. I think the biggest thing is um, the unique thing that we have as a company, what we're doing is we're kind of the first contact when patients or international travelers are out of state that come and stay in these hotel rooms. A lot of them don't anticipate on getting sick when they're here, so it's kind of an unforeseen circumstance. And when it does happen, I think we're in a unique position where we're the face of medicine in the hotel room. So our goal and intent, and I think we've accomplished it very well and we'll continue to do so, is when we meet the client, treat them and have ongoing follow-up with them, I think we're in a position where if we actually come across as professional, hospitable, which we have 100% of the time, puts a good flavor in their mouth when they leave. They're like, hey, I went to Las Vegas for gambling or date whatever it may be a reception whatever it is and unfortunately i got sick i had a great experience not necessarily just with me or with tyre but just in general and i think by giving a good experience from that perspective their first contact um when they come back obviously they'll know who to call number one number mm -hmm. two and then the word gets out people go researching online las vegas medicine they may research tyre or myself these are the people that we came into contact with, they might hit other sites on whatever search engine they use, might bring up other things in regards to medicine in Las Vegas. And I think we're kind of getting the word out that it's not just gambling and hospitality industry. There's a big medical community, very well-educated, smart, smart, smart physicians that know what they're doing. We get a bad rap growing up here, which is not anywhere you go, you're going to get a bad rap. Um, but I think we've made strides big time with changing that perception. So I think we're in a very important position doing what we do is we're hospitable to the client. We give them a good experience. And so when they come back, they may think twice about, oh, instead of going, let's say to Southern California or back east somewhere else to get a cosmetic procedure, some kind of intervention, whether it's for cosmetic purposes or medical if you need a hip transplant, let's say, if you need some kind of surgical intervention, why not come to Las Vegas and do it here? We have the amenities, we have the hotel rooms, we have the facilities from a hospitality perspective, but it's nice to show patients that we also have the medical resources that are necessary to combine the two areas together too. So, it's interesting. We're on a, a journey and a partnership with UNLV, the actual the hotel school. Uh, Dr. Stowe Shoemaker, who's the dean over there, he brings some... Uh, Healthcare hospitality experience to Las Vegas. We recruited him from the University of Houston and MD Anderson. And actually, uh, we just uh, secured a date the, the other day on November 14th. We're going to be holding a conference uh, called Hospitality and Healthcare. And what it is, is how do we take this intellectual property that we own uh, in Las Vegas? If you think about it, we deliver a better experience than any other city in the world. And how do we start bringing that into healthcare? And I think you all are on the forefront of that. Uh, you're doing it in a time of need, uh, a, a potentially emergent situation where this guest is just looking to, they, they want to have fun. They're in Las Vegas. So tell us a, a little bit about the, the experience. You pick up the phone and it's, is it a concierge that's calling you? And how do you facilitate all of this? I'm curious. Sure. So it could be a concierge. It could be a front desk agent, a hotel manager. It could be almost anyone who is um, not just front facing the guest experience, but behind the scenes if the guests were to call from their hotel room. Mm -hmm. um, they introduce the guests. Um, they 
simply give the information that the guest has provided to them, and I immediately um, give the information. I contact Dr. George, who um, is amazing. It's almost like he's he knows exactly when I'm calling because he picks up the <laughs> phone in about two seconds. So I'm very grateful for that. But we have a very um, the the procedures we have in place. Um, allow the guest to feel so secure, so safe, um, really, truly cared for and listened to. Um, and because the call is so seamless, um, the guests immediately just, we start making them feel really good. It, it, you know, he begins his triage immediately with the guest, um, which is very difficult. You know, it's just so intimidating being in Las Vegas. I have many guests who have traveled here and not not only may they be international guests, they may not even speak the language. Sure. And um, so we, we, we assist them and we help them and we care for them. And I've even had some feedback where guests have, have communicated to me that had we known you existed before, you know, I may have traveled with my elderly parents or a person who has, you know, some medical situations, but we were unsure. We didn't know. We didn't know where to begin. I mean, ha- you know, people are very, um, it, some people don't even have a primary physician in their own city. So traveling can be overwhelming. Um, but now that they know that we're here, it's made such a big difference. And uh, mm-hmm. we're very proud of that. So, Dr. George, when you show up to you, I, I just have this vision in my mind of a bow tie and a little black bag. And The black bags, there are no bow tie, my friend. No bow tie? Come on. <laughs> Not yet. So it's fun. We, what we do, the standard protocol, like Tyra said, once I arrive at the hotel property, I'll immediately notify her. If, let's say the concierge contacted us. I'll go uh, talk to the concierge face to face, introduce myself, thank that person for the re- referral. Sure. Um, sometimes we don't get them from the concierge. The patients will actually call the company directly and speak with right. Tyra and myself. So it's not always the concierge, but let's say it was the concierge in this case. I'll talk to the concierge. And as a courtesy to the guest, rather than me going to the hotel room, but myself, they have no idea who I am. I always have the concierge walk me to the patient's hotel room, knock on the door, open the door, introduce me to the patient so they kind of have an idea of who is this person randomly with a bag outside of my door coming to see me. So it it puts them more at ease. They feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, Concierge, obviously for privacy purposes, leaves the room. Um, And then I do my thing with the client and exam, talk to the patient, kind of get an idea of what's going on. And then as soon as I'm done with that interaction in the hotel room, before I leave, the patient always has copies of everything, whether it's prescriptions, uh, if I give them verbal instructions, there's two ways that we follow up with the client. I'll either typical hotel room, there's a pad with the hotel's name and a pen, and I grab that and actually write down the instructions for the patient because it's nerve wracking. You're there with this random physician in a hotel room in a city that you're not from, and I can sit here and talk until I turn blue, but they're not going to remember one dang thing that I say. So as a courtesy, I write everything down for them so they have something to reference, and they always have accessibility to either myself or Tyra 24-7. I have patients that will call me. They'll email us directly as well if they lost something or if they didn't, they misunderstood something, obviously. Once that procedure is done, I'll go downstairs to the concierge again. Let's say the patient needs a prescription delivered or picked up. Um, We'll network with the concierge, with a hotel facility, whether it's Tyra going and getting the prescription or if we have the hotel assist us in providing transportation for the patient. We kind of get those things assessed. So like Tyra said, it's a stream, it's a smooth process. It's streamlined from the first phone call until my second follow-up call the day of their departure to make sure that everything's been to their satisfaction, they're happy, Um, nothing gets lost because what happens, you have a physician that goes to the room, sees a patient, gives them a prescription. If you have no follow-up, it puts the patient in a normal predicament because to them, they may still have a cough the next day and in their perception, well, I took this pill two times already, it should be gone. When in reality, as a physician, we know it may take three or four days for that to resolve. So by calling them and saying, hey, look, you are feeling better, some of your symptoms have resolved, you're just providing more reassurance to them. And I think they like that follow-up. It gives it a personal touch, which is kind of what a company is all about as well too. And it goes back to hospitality and healthcare and uniting those two arenas and what perfect place to do it in, but Las Vegas, obviously. So that's big. I agree. I, I do want to say that, you know, we, we do understand the importance of being an extension of the property's brand. So, um, you know, we take that very seriously whenever we're um, with the guest. And, you know, Dr. Constantine is, um, you know, in his suit, and we're, we're completely um, on brand with the hotel. And, and, and it's important. It's important. It definitely it's, is. It matters. Yeah, because the you know? property the property wants to keep that guest, as we talked about earlier, in the hotel, spending money, enjoying the, the site. So 
earlier we touched on uh, billing. Is this billed? Is it reimbursable? How does that work for the guest? So what we usually do is once the I see the guest in the hotel room and later that evening what I do is I email them three components. The first component is a billable HICFA form. We use it in medicine to do billing. We do not directly bill the insurance for the client. Um, we actually provide them with appropriate billing information so they therefore can submit that to the insurance company for reimbursement. And a majority of patients have traveler's insurance, which does 99.9% .9 of the time pick up 100% of the costs that are incurred mm -hmm. as long as we as the physicians bill it correctly. Um, that's one piece of information we provide. We also send the patient a letter thanking them for choosing us and hoping they had a good experience with us. But that also explains what their medical diagnoses were, again, for reimbursement purposes from their mm -hmm. traveler's insurance or medical insurance. And then we also send a patient a third uh, piece of paper. It's another letter, again, thanking them, making sure they had a great experience. But it also is an invoice kind of copying what the HICFA billing form said. So it's more readable to the patient because this red and white form with codes, they have no idea. So by doing all those three forms via email, they have it, it's accessible, and they're very happy because they've had good follow-up, good care. So we've not had one kickback in the past three or four months, all the patients I have followed up with. Um, there's been a few where they've needed more information. So as a sure. courtesy, we were write a letter of explanation that kind of explains to the insurance company more detailed information they may require. But we've all of them have been paid as far as we've been discussed and talked to you about. That's great. So Tyra, tell us, what hotels are you working with? Uh, and I'm sure you've got some that you're working with right now, obviously others that you're working on getting onto this sure. list, but tell us a little bit about the properties that you want to work with. So I'm very fortunate. Um, at, I'm at all of the major resorts. Um, I'm at City Center, but mm -hmm. I'm working with MGM proper that should be finalized in June. But other than that, I'm at every single major luxury resort and brand. Um, I think the next um, goal for me will probably be um, downtown and, and mm -hmm. capturing that market and assisting them. I don't want them to feel like they're on their own island. Sure. Um, kind of bridging the gap. They're between, part of the brand. Absolutely. Between downtown and, and the major strip resort. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And we're also um, expanding to luxury high rises and residences. Mm -hmm. It's not just for tourists. Um, and um, a lot of the press that we've received um, recently. You've gotten has, a lot of press. Thank you. <clears throat> we're... Um, We've been very supportive, and, and residents are so excited about this, and that excites us. You know, that definitely yes. was um, part of, like, the next stage mm -hmm. of Resort Sierra Gym Dame. The fact that we can start it now is, is delightful, and uh, it's an honor. And, Dr. George, you've been busy. This isn't your only business. You've got another... Uh, concierge practice at your building, Hygia. Correct. So tell us about Hygia real quick. So, we're, we're, the show's coming to Hygia, the end. Hygia, just yeah. quickly in a minute. Hygia, by definition, is the Greek goddess of health. Being a Greek background, this is kind of where the name came from. Uh, what our company does is kind of an offshoot of what Tyra and I have been doing with the resort Sierra MD. Again, emerging hospitality and healthcare here in Las Vegas will be the first combined internal medicine and pediatrics concierge facility in town. It's the first of its kind. That's unique. So we'll, again, we're here for our not only our guests that come in internationally and nationally, but also for our local clientele. That's what it's all about, giving good care to our local community members, but also to those that travel to our city as well. So we're hoping to launch June the 1st to the public. So we'll keep you guys updated with more information. Congratulations on all the success. Thank I want to thank very much. both of you all for being on the show today. Uh, it's been wonderful having you as guests. For those that are on the show, you could view us every single week at 10 o'clock. We are live on Roku, iTunes, live stream, YouTube, Google, uh, but Google Play, Facebook, you name it. You'll find us. Uh, you can always visit the website at LasVegasHeels.org and catch the last episodes. And for our guests, if you could let them know how they could get hold of Resort Sierra's MD, that would be great. Sure. Resort Sierra MD is um, is obviously our website, and you can also reach me personally at Tyra at Resort dot com. Fantastic. Well, I thank everybody for being with us today, and let's uh, make it a great day. Excellent. Thanks, Doug. Thank you very much for having us on, Doug.